very good day to you all out there and welcome back to No Man's Sky. In today's episode we're going to be showing you how to build a gas farm. Various types of gases can be found throughout the different planets in No Man's Sky. Such gases may include nitrogen, radon, sulfurine and of course oxygen. If you're tired of having to hunt around for oxygen plants, here's a classic example of how to set up an unlimited supply of gas so you'll never have to worry about it again. First and foremost, let's take a look at the equipment you are going to need in order to make your gas farm. If you are fairly new to the game and have never done this before, follow these simple step-by-step -step instructions. Firstly, let's head over to the Space Anomaly. You can summon this, if you've already found it for the first time, by heading into space in your spaceship and pressing down on the D-pad. Once inside, head up top and to the back of the anomaly to find the terminals. Make your way over to the multi-tool merchant, as you're going to need the analysis visor upgrade. This will enable you to scan for hotspots on every planet that you visit. Next, let's head over to the construction terminal. By accessing this, you can unlock new base parts for salvage data. Salvage data can be found in buried technology modules on every planet in the game. You can simply find this by using your visor and heading over to the location to unearth it with your terrain manipulator. Each buried technology module will give you between 1 and 4 salvage data. To start your gas farm you're going to need the following items. A gas extractor, a feed pipe, a storage silo and a geomagnetic generator. I prefer these because they can run self-sufficiently without the use of sunlight. They draw power from the ground. Once you have purchased these, let's head out of the anomaly and begin making our farm. Let's go to the first planet we see here. Luckily for us, it's a paradise planet, which means the weather is mellow. We aren't going to be killed by storms. We will set our spaceship down here and begin scanning. As you can see, by activating the survey device, you are now able to scan for hotspots. The three types of hotspots consist of gas extraction, mineral extraction, and geomagnetic power. Let's select the gas cloud, as this is what we're starting today. Even luckier for us, we have found an S-Class, potential S-Class, gas extraction site. Let's head over to there now. The guidance system for the survey device is very simple. Notice the two lots of pulsing lines on the left hand side and the right hand side. If the left side is flashing, you go left. If the right side is flashing, you go right, until both of the pulsing lines are flashing in the centre. This means you are on the right path and should head in a straight line until you reach the site. Once you have reached the site, your visor will automatically scan the hotspot. This will reveal what type of gas it is. In this case, we found oxygen, which is excellent. It's always a useful idea to tag the hotspot so that you can refer to it later on. Now, let's begin a search for geomagnetic power. This could take a while. Once a potential hotspot has been indicated on the survey device, repeat the process and follow the pulsing lines until you reach the spot. Once you've scanned the spot, repeat the process of tagging it or place down a custom marker. Now let's discover how far we are from our original source where we discovered the gas. It's saying here we are 915 units away, or paces, whichever way you'd like to look at it. What we'd like to do in this case is half that distance and place down a base computer. Half of 915, and yes I had to look this up, is 457. So let's head away from the destination we're currently at until we reach about 457 units distance from it, and then place down a base computer. This will all become apparent in a minute, and I'll explain why.
Now that our computer is placed, we have to link the two sites together. The base computer will play a part in this, as you are able to construct around it for anywhere up to 300 units distance from it. If you go beyond the 300 unit distance, your skill tree will disappear and you will no longer be able to place parts for your base. There's a way around this, and I'll explain it now. Access your skill tree pressing up on the D-pad and take out a basic structure. For example, a metal wall. Take a step back until you are within range of your base computer once again. Look off into the distance in the direction you are heading and place a wall as far as you can. As you can see, we are now able to place parts using our skill tree beyond this zone. Repeat this process until you finally reach the destination you are heading for. Now that we are here, we can place down some geomagnetic generators. If you use your analysis visor, you will see a percentage on the left hand side over here. This indicates how strong the hotspot is and how close to the center of it you actually are. The closer to the center, the more power you're going to generate. It's ideal to get this number as high as possible before you start placing. Another useful little trick that I like to use is you can actually stack the generators on top of one another. That way you are harvesting the most power that is humanly possible. Now that they are placed, they need to be wired up together. So, access your skill tree pressing up on the D-pad. Go over to tech, go over to power and select electrical wiring. Repeat this process until all the generators are now connected together. And if I do a quick flyby past each generator, you can see they are now all generating power. Once connected, take an additional wire and begin making your way back to your base computer. You can connect the wire intermittently at the walls you've placed or on the ground, as it's not going to matter, you won't be building across this part. Once you have reached the base computer, you can continue this process until you reach the other hotspot where your gas is. You won't need walls in this case, as the wiring considers itself a part of the base and will extend out accordingly. Once you've reached the gas hotspot, check again in the analysis visor for the percentage. Again, make sure it's at the highest percentage possible before you start placing items. And like with the electromagnetic generators, the gas extractors can actually be placed on top of one another. Once the extractors have been placed, connect them with a power source and a feed pipe, as the gas that they are collecting will have to be placed into a storage silo for you to collect at a later time. Once the feed pipe is constructed, as before, each individual gas extractor will have to be connected to a power source. Use the wire you've brought over. The storage silos do not require power, but they do require the feed pipe to be connected from the extractors. To max out your storage, connect all the storage silos with a feed pipe or supply pipe. By accessing the storage silo, the box over here will now indicate to you how much oxygen you are extracting per hour and how long it will take until the silos are completely full. I should point out, this isn't the neatest job I've ever done. It's just to show you how to make one. Now that the farm is completed, I'll take you to a much neater version that myself and Kill Bill 74 have previously built. I'd like to thank everybody for taking the time to watch this and we hope it's been of some use to you. See you in the next video.